Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you. You ain't heard nothing. Hello and welcome to this edition of Recent Reads. I recently read Long Summer Day, book one of A Horseman Riding By by R.F. Delderfield for the Chunkton's Reading Challenge. Paul Craddock, a young and idealistic young man, has just returned from the Boer War at the beginning of the 20th century as the Victorian era is coming to an end. He's looking for a role for himself. His father, who has recently died, has left him a 50% share in a successful scrap merchants and £20,000 when he reaches the age of 25. His father's partner, who honours the memory of Paul's father, supports him when he decides to buy a rundown estate in Devon, in the southwest of England. The story involves the daunting task that Paul, who has no experience of estate management, sets himself to restore the neglected country estate of Shallowford to a, to a prosperous and successful enterprise, which involves seven farms and the mixed bag of characters running them, or in some cases neglecting them. Dolderfield is a superb novelist who creates memorable characters and involving stories in a pleasing and accessible style. The two women that Paul marries are as unlike as chalk and cheese, but each one adds something memorable to the plot. I say plot, but this is a family saga and is filled with interweaving relationships and domestic dramas, romantic entanglements and tragedies. This was my second reading of this novel and I enjoyed it as much the second time around and my rating for this novel is A. The second book in the trilogy I am planning to read for the Chunkster's Reading Challenge is Post of Honour. Donations to Book Aid International to date total £1,032. Thank you to everyone who has continued to participate in the Chunkster's Reading Challenge and to donate to this worthwhile book-related charity. I also recently read The Fortunes and Misfortunes of Moll Flanders by Daniel Defoe. The only thing I want to say about this famous novel is that it is interesting for the light it throws on the harsh conditions of the poor and prison life in England in the 1600s. Posing as a morality tale, it tells the story of the immoral Moll Flanders, which is a kind of everyman story. We can see ourselves in Moll, human nature at its worst. In her own words, Moll tells a vivid and racy tale of a woman's experience in the seamy side of life in late 17th and early 18th century England and America. Born in the infamous Newgate prison and seduced in the home of her adoptive family, she learns to live off her wits, defying the traditional depiction of women as helpless victims. As a whore, a professional thief and a transported felon in Virginia, Moll still manages to marry five times, sometimes bigamously and once unknowingly to her own brother. Her protestations of repentance for her wicked life is somewhat less than convincing as she seems to have enjoyed her immoral life and to relish retelling it. That aside, it was interesting and worth reading once, and thus my rating for this novel is B. I also recently read two plays. The first was The Breadwinner, a three-scene play by W. Somerset Maugham. This involves a stockbroker who has been smashed. That is, he is not able to cover his financial obligations to his clients. His business associates and his bank are willing to support him, but this will require him to contribute his own personal funds amounting to £20,000, a considerable sum at that period. His friends and family expect that, as an honourable man, that he will do what is morally expected of him. They are all shocked when he decides to turn down the support offered to him to continue trading as a broker. Instead, he decides to throw it all up and leave his wife and children to start a new life elsewhere 
dividing his remaining capital, 15,000, to his wife and children, and 5,000 for himself. This sounds like a tragedy, but in Mormon's hands, the interplay of the characters is delightfully comedic. While reading this play, I was reminded of Mom's novel The Moon and Sixpence, which was loosely based on Paul Gauguin's experience of leaving his job as a stockbroker and leaving his wife and children to go to the South Seas to paint. The play The Breadwinner is nothing like The Moon and Sixpence. The only similarity is that the stockbroker leaves his career and family to begin a new life, free of all responsibility. I enjoyed it, but I thought it ended on a whimper rather than a bang. The second play I read was Captain Brassbound's Conversion in Three Acts by George Bernard Shaw. I cannot recommend this play to American readers because the first act is made up of largely Cockney dialect, which at times even I, who have lived among Cockneys for years, found it difficult to decipher. American readers may have been exposed to it in My Fair Lady, which was based on Shaw's Pygmalion, but reading pages upon pages of Cockney dialect is not easy, even for this Englishman. What was the play about? Do you know? I'm not sure. Even at the end of the play, I have no idea what Captain Brassbent was converted from or to. A couple of aristocrats, Sir Howard Hallam, an English judge, and his sister-in-law, Lady Cicely Winefleet, arrive in Morocco and want to walk across Morocco and into the Moroccan mountains, which are full of Moors who are hostile to Christians, or infidels as they call them. Captain Brassbound and his unreliable crew are hired to escort them. In Act 2 there is some argy-bargy with some of the shakes, which I didn't really understand, and some misunderstandings between the captain and crew and the captain and the couple, whom it turns out are his relations. The judge has done something morally dubious in the past involving Brassbound's mother and has acquired her property which should have been Brassbound's, for which Brassbound is resentful and so he plans to hand Hallam over to the Moors. Act 3 involves a court case which ends with Brassbound and his crew being acquitted. Brassbound proposes marriage to Lady Sicily, who is a delightful character, but instead goes off to his ship end of play. I enjoyed this play, although I think I need to read it again to fully appreciate some of the incidents. And now here's a quick recap and I'll be back soon with another booktube video.